talk with Chris and Travis. I'm Travis. And I'm Chris. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and share this video. And don't forget to catch us on Instagram at Real Talk with Chris and Travis. So as always, I like to introduce the topic. And today's topic is disabled people's life hacks. You know, clever adaptations that we may or may not use around the house, but it's definitely very helpful. So today, with the way we're gonna set this one up, I'm gonna I'm kind of interview Travis. You know what I'm saying? I'm gonna jump in and out, but I'm gonna basically put the focus on him today, man. We're gonna interview Travis. And so, I'm ready. You ready? Let's get it. All right, my first question, man. Just give us a little bit of insight on like what it's like to, you know what I'm saying, to like live on your own, you know what I'm saying, with a disability. Yeah, man, I mean, I feel like it's, uh, I mean, it's, sometimes it can be challenging, you know, just trying to, you know, like sometimes you might have some obstacles, you might have to figure out how to, uh, how to, uh, you know, get through or whatever, but I mean, living on my own, I mean, I feel like it's, it's cool, I mean, I, I enjoy it, I mean, where I live at is pretty much accessible, like the, the grounds is accessible, um, okay. you know, everything is made for me to be able to live freely without, you know, having to worry about anything. Okay. So, are there, <clears throat> like, elaborate a little bit when you say, like, certain op obstacles, if, if you can, you know what I'm saying? Like, elaborate a little bit on that for me. Like, for instance, like, if you, uh, maybe, like, if you stay somewhere and, uh, there needs to be a ramp somewhere and you have to go, like, a long way. Okay. You know, so you, you gotta... Like certain restaurants, you might have to park yeah. in the back because the ramp is in the back for you to get into... Yeah. Okay, okay. You know, so you gotta just figure out a way to, you know, <clears throat> I guess like, make it easier, you know. you know. I, I mean, I understand where you're coming from. Yeah. So like, okay, like right now, we're filming every, every time we film, we at my house. Mm -hmm. And at my house, for example, um... When we got our house redone after the flood, the people actually had to widen up. You know, they had to make the bathroom doorways wider yeah. so that I don't have to turn sideways to get in and out the bathroom. Yeah. You know, that's that's an adaptation they did for me. Also, they attached um, uh, rails on the walls near the toilet and the tub so that I can climb in and out the tub or the shower without falling. You know, if I slip by the toilet, I got a rail I can grab onto to help keep me balanced, you know, so I don't fall, you know, so, because mm -hmm. definitely, you know, <clears throat> I need a lot of space, and I'm pretty sure with you being in a wheelchair, doorways, hallways got to be wide, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, definitely, definitely need, uh, you know, wide doorways, uh, lower uh, light switches. Okay. You know, where I live. That's the, a definite. <laughs> the light switches are low, the uh, thermostat is low. Okay. You know. The stove, you know, everything is in the front. So I have to reach over the burners and because possibly burn a, myself. That's a safety issue. Yeah. Speaking of burning <laughs> burning yourself, a couple of days ago I was making fries, right? Yeah. I absolutely burnt myself. <laughs> okay. I got like like bumps like this on my chest and everything. It splashed. Oh, the man. cooking oil. I was stirring the fries and the spoon slipped and my hand hit the edge of the pot. And instantly I grabbed the spoon and flipped it up and it all splashed. <laughs> so, Man. yeah, it hurt it. <laughs> it's just one of them things. Speaking of grease splashing, man, I remember when I was younger, I was making some French fries, mm -hmm. and I had the, the grease up too high. I didn't know you were supposed to check the grease. You know how you, some people like sprinkle a little bit of water in it? To see if it popped or something like that? I didn't do that. I just dumped the fries in there all all our... <laughs> <laughs> It just blew up because the, <laughs> were the fries still frozen? Yeah. Yeah. See, my wife always, when we do, like, stuff that's frozen, they got to go, <laughs> like, at all. Yeah. She always sit the stuff on the counter and be like, don't touch it, let it thaw out, or she'll sit it in the sink, and she'll run, like, warm water or cold water on it till it fill up the sink, and just let it sit in there so it can thaw out. Yeah. See what I'm saying? Like, I'm, <clears throat> I'm still learning a lot of stuff about cooking, mm -hmm. you know, but, you know what I'm saying? I, I feel like, when you're disabled, there's certain things that's very, very necessary. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Like you said, the knobs on your stove is in the front. Mm -hmm. The knobs on my stove, I know y'all can't can't see it, but the knobs on my stove is on the back of the the back part of the stove. If I gotta turn a burner on or off, I gotta reach 
over the burner. <laughs> yeah. You know, now my stove is electric. You know, it don't it don't have no flames on it, but if I if the burner is on, you know what I'm saying, and I slip and my arm, you know, drop on the pot, I'm gonna burn myself. Yeah. Trying to turn off the burner. You know, the knobs need to be in the front. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like Travis said, even though I stand up, it's still a safety precaution because my balance is not all that good. Yeah. Um also like lower countertops as well. Right, right, and that's another plus. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? You don't want to live in a place where the stuff is too high up, you know, where, where you're having to stretch out <laughs> to reach it and stuff like that. Yeah. You know, that's how you end up with a back injury and, and all of that kind of stuff. Yeah. You know, can you can you tell us about um maybe like, you know, like doing laundry, you know what I'm saying? How is that for you? Oh, it's, a, it's pretty easy because uh, I have like the front loaders. So I like those. Yeah, everything in the front, so I mean... It's just a matter of just putting everything in there. It's easy to put in there. It's easy to reach in and get everything out and put it, you know, in the dryer as well, washing and dryer. Okay. So, I mean, it's a pretty easy process with the front loaders because everything, you know, the knobs and everything on the front, buttons okay. on the front. So, I mean, it's it makes it pretty easy for a person with a disability to have, like, the front loader washing and dryer. And, again, y'all, I just want to let y'all know something. We filming in my house. These doors behind me, is where my washer and dryer is. We have a top loader washing machine. <laughs> Knobs is on the back. You gotta reach across it, right? Yeah. The dryer is front loaded, but the knobs are at the top on the top at the back. Nothing in the front. Okay. You know, so if if I was in a wheelchair, I'm in a stuck situation because the knobs on the top <laughs> at the back on yeah. everything. I can't. You see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So again. If you are a, um, if you are a, a landlord type of person, right, and you want to rent out your your houses or your apartments and things like that, you need to think about putting some adaptations in those places for people with disabilities, because that could be a potential market for you. Everybody needs somewhere to live. Yeah, and, a pretty you know, a pretty big market for you. Yeah. Most definitely. Man, I can say it was it's been countless times when I was looking for an apartment. You know. I went I call these apartment complexes and they were like I would ask them, you know, is it accessible? And they'll say, Yeah. So I go see them. I mean, what they consider accessible is having like a handicapped parking. But there were no ramps. That's it? Yeah, it was no ramps. So I go see the apartment and it wasn't even accessible. They were like, Oh, we'll modify it for you, you know, just Tell us what you need. I'm like, why y'all tell me it's accessible if it's really not even? Because they got to draw you in. <laughs> you catch more flies with honey, right? I guess. <laughs> you ain't catch nothing, though. <laughs> <laughs> they was using the wrong bait, man. You got to <laughs> you gotta sweeten the deal before the, before you get there, man. You can't, All right. you know, uh, 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 like you said, handicapped parking spot, there's no, but there's no ramps. Made no sense. No sense at all. You know what I'm saying? If you're going to be a person that's providing housing to people, you know what I'm saying? You got to think of some stuff before the person say it. Mm. That's going to be a winner, you know, for them. And a win for them, especially like he said, he Travis went to multiple apartment complexes. He, he went to multiple places. I'm sure he was tired of looking, man. In the place he lives in now, they're like, yeah, we handicapped accessible. When he got there and saw what it was, it's just like almost to the point, it don't matter what the price is on me, and I'm paying it, like... <laughs> <laughs> See what I'm saying? Pretty much. <laughs> I mean, because when I went and saw it, it was like, it was really accessible. Like, everything is really accessible to a T, you know? And y'all, I've, I've been to his apartment a couple of times before the pandemic. I hadn't been in a while. But the last time I was there, you know what I'm saying? Everything is very spacious. He's got plenty of room to move around. Um, it also, the apartment has a lot of great amenities. Like, the indoor basketball court is one of my favorite things. <laughs> um, there's an indoor, um, is it indoor exercise room? Yeah. And, yeah. Of course, and, of course, a pool. You know what I'm saying? So. And what I like about the pool is that they uh, they actually put the, uh, I don't know what it's called, but it's like a little chair that you can get in for, for the a person. Lift, the lift to put you like in the pool and get you out? Yeah. See what I'm saying? A lot of places don't really have those, but, I mean. Somebody thought of everything. Yeah. You know, and if you go, if you're gonna be in the in the 
the industry where you're you're building these apartments or these houses or these condos and you're gonna be renting them out to people and you wanna make your money, make sure you think about the disabled community. Right. Because it's not just people that's born with disabilities. You could be an able bodied person and something happens to you and now you're part of the disabled community. I mean a disability can happen at any time. Anywhere. <laughs> Anywhere. <laughs> In any way. Too. Anybody. You know, so you know. You gotta think ahead on these things if you're gonna be building these types of uh, places, you know. I mean, I feel like they need to have more people with disabilities actually making decisions oh, on most accessibility as well. Cause, I mean, I feel like it's not really people with disabilities actually making decisions. Cause I can tell by the way by the way the stuff made is made, you know. Yeah, mo most definitely, man, most definitely. And I think that everyday life is gonna present challenges. You know what I'm saying? The yeah. most the most basic things for one person may not be so basic for somebody else, you know. But we all want to be independent. Well, at least most people want to be independent. I know me and you do, <laughs> you know. So, I, I if there's certain things I need in my place, they gotta be there either before I get there or somebody gotta tell me. If you need this, let me know. I can I can do it. You mm -hmm. know what I'm saying? Um, I know for me personally, I I need things I can hold on to. That's that's one thing that's major for me. Yeah. Especially if it's something I gotta climb like like stairs or steps. I needed to have two rails, one on each side. Mm -hmm. And the rails need to be anchored down heavily so they don't move. Cause when I grab onto them and I move, if they not anchored down, I'm pulling them with me. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, you don't know how many steps I went up and the and the rail was just like anchored to the bottom step. And the screws wasn't all the way down in the step and I absolutely pulled the rail up um somewhat. Right. You know, I didn't fall, but the people who built the, the steps and the rails was just kind of like, oops, <laughs> like, I'm going to have to fix that. Like, you think? <laughs> Especially if you're a place of business, you don't want me to fall and not, and I got to sue you now because you yo, 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 you didn't sit your stuff on right now and bust my face open. We got a problem. Yeah. You know? But, you know, bathroom situations is another thing that's major for me. Yeah. Whether I'm in my own place, somebody else's place, if I'm you know in a in a uh, public place like a place of business, bathrooms, especially like like small bathrooms, I can't stand them. Yeah. I can't I can't open the door and I can't get. I got to turn and and don't don't do that to me. Where the where the wide doorway is at? <laughs> yeah, I hate small bathrooms, man. I like. I want. I like bathrooms where I can make a 360 in the bathroom. You know, <laughs> in the bathroom doing donuts. <laughs> yeah, I like that. A 360 without hitting anything. You know, and I can do that in my bathroom. Okay. So I mean, the only thing I didn't, I don't like about my bathroom is that it's a tub in there instead of like a roll-in shower. That's the only thing I think they kind of messed up on. And I wonder, like, with that situation, like, what happened? I mean, I wonder if they. Maybe they figure like whoever it is, they could slide themselves in and out of the chair or put the crutches down, lay the walker down and get in. Yeah. I, I don't know, but I, I think I definitely, if I'm building a place, I would have just did the, the roll in shower. Yeah. Even though, okay, well, what if somebody who's not in the wheelchair is staying in the, <laughs> staying in the, um, the apartment? So, <laughs> so it don't matter. That person is going to figure it out. But for the person in the wheelchair, you don't, you don't want them to have to be sliding and Lifting themselves out of the chair to the tub, that's not a, yeah. you know, do you, do you have, um, if you want to shout, do you have any, like, the attachments or detachments that you have to use? Yeah, my shower, the shower head is a, a detachable shower head. Okay. So, that makes it, uh, you know, a lot easier. And I'm assuming, like, the sink is lower for you to reach up and wash your hands and stuff like that? Yeah, it's, uh, completely, I can roll up under it and, you know. But the only thing with that, you kind of lose like a, like cabinets. So yeah, like for thing. storage space and yeah, stuff like that. Space. I can understand that. But that's the only thing, you know, as far as like having to get rid of the bottom part to roll up under. But I mean, you can always buy like a little storage look. Yeah. The storage thing. Or they could have put, you know, like, um, you know how like in the kitchen you might have a pantry? Mm -hmm. They could have put a, a shelving system like that in the bathroom. Yeah, that's true. For you to have storage, cause you don't have it at the bottom underneath the sink. That's true. I'm just, I'm just thinking. But I mean, they did it in the kitchen though, like the kitchen, mm -hmm. like the, 
like the cabinet, some of the cabinets can be kind of high. Mm -hmm. So they got like a storage space underneath the cabinets, like a little drop, I can't really explain, like a drop down thing. Okay. So you can put like dishes underneath. What about washing the dishes or do you have a dishwasher? Both. Both? I, mean, I, I got a dishwasher. Yeah, see, we got both here. And my wife will tell you, like, I, I hate washing dishes by hand. Only because, I like, for me to wash dishes by hand, it take me two hours. And that's two hours straight standing up. Right. And I, I be my legs be tired. I'll be like, you know what? I even tried, like, getting a bar stool or a chair, like how I'm sitting now. Mm -hmm. And because of the way my feet turn out, it turns my knees, too. So I can't get all the way to the sink because my knees are turned and they shoving into the cabinet door. Yeah. So I'm like... I can't sit down and wash the dishes because I can't get close enough to the sink. Mm -hmm. So I have to stand up. Yeah. And I'm standing up. If it take me two hours to wash dishes, it's just like, let's just deal with it. Low back pain, legs tired. just. <laughs> so me, especially if it's a big load of dishes, what I do is I let them soak, you know, dishwashing liquid hot water, mm -hmm. some bleach, let them soak for a little bit. And then I'll like organize the loads and then I'll go one load at a time in the dishwasher. Yeah. That's that's how I wash my dishes. If the dishwasher break, I'm mad. <laughs> Just <laughs> Man, I, I've never even used my dishwasher. I use mine faithfully. I never use it. Shoot the light blue right now cause some minute. <laughs> 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 I, I use the dishwasher faithfully. So whoever invented the dishwasher, thank God for you, sir or ma'am. I'm just saying. <laughs> yeah, I don't never use that thing, man. I, I use it. Yeah. You know. Um and again, y'all, we just talking about some adaptations that, you know, some life hacks for people that's dis disabled to make our lives a little, a little easier and also make independence and being on our own a lot more reachable because that's the whole goal about it, you know. Um, oh, and another thing, man, that I want to point out. Oh, yeah. That, uh, you know, I've seen a lot of places, but the place that I'm at now, I mean, like the closet, the racks, okay. they were already low. Okay. So I've seen other apartment complexes with the racks. They say it's handicap accessible, but the racks are like way up here. Like how am I hang my clothes and they way up here? I mean, I guess they expect you to use like the grabber thing or something. <laughs> I'm just gonna grab the hanger with your clothes on it and reach it up there. Yeah. I'm like, but what if you got two jeans on one hanger? That that grabber ain't gonna be able to hold that weight. <laughs> uh, but the racks are already like low enough, and it's like a shelf above the rack mm -hmm. to like line up all my shoes. Is the closet wide enough for you to actually roll in there and roll out? Oh, yeah. It's like a, a what they call it? The walk-in closet? Roll okay. In closet. Yeah. yeah. Man, like a boss. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. So, you know what I'm saying? And again, if you see this video and you are a, you know, somebody in the construction industry and you build houses or you, you know, you construct condos, apartments, again, don't, don't steal the ideas, but just think about it. I mean, if you... Even if you're building places for able-bodied people, some of this stuff, both parties can benefit from. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Some stuff is just common sense when you're in certain situations. Right. Um, I've seen places on TV and like when I watch documentaries, because I, I like to watch documentaries. And there's um, people, that are, people that are blind. And so what they'll do is they'll, they'll turn accessibility features on on their smartphone so that the phone can talk to them and tell them where they are. Mm -hmm. And they'll use that, you know, um, in their apartment or in their house. They'll be like, you know, um, what's in my fridge or something like that. And the phone will actually scan the refrigerator with their camera on the phone and then tell them there's milk, there's eggs, there's, you know, this, that, and the third. You know what I'm saying? I don't fully understand how it works, but I think it's just incredible that it does that. Because if you can't see, right, you can feel the, the 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 shelf, but you may not be able to feel everything that's there, yeah. if, if I'm making any sense. Yeah. And now there's refrigerators that you can buy, <laughs> and they are expensive, but I'm thinking that if you're a person who's, you know, who's blind, maybe you can get a discount on a refrigerator like this. There's a refrigerator, Samsung makes uh, one of them. And this refrigerator has a, it's got cameras built into it and it's got like um, sensors, little electronic sensors mm -hmm. that will tell you you're out of milk. You need to buy more milk. Your milk expires on this date. Your eggs expire on this date. 
your long eggs. <laughs> mm -hmm. Like you can actually catalog what you're putting in your refrigerator. Yeah. By by letting the refrigerator scan the barcode on the on the item, and the refrigerator says this is orange juice, this is milk. You see, what, see what I'm saying? That's dope. So when it's low, right? Uh. Hey, Travis, your milk is low. Would you like me to add that to your grocery list? See what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And then when you sync your phone up with the refrigerator, it sends the grocery list to your phone. And you can go in and set the reminder that I'm, I'm going buy groceries on this day. Remind me that I need to get milk. I need to get eggs. I need to get... See what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Technology, y'all. If you, if you follow the podcast, you know we love technology because... It makes its accessibility so much easier, man. Oh yeah. And y'all don't y'all don't know, you know, if 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 you're not somebody who disabled, you may hear us talk about, you know, being able to be on our own. But until you are a person that's disabled, you don't understand how huge that is for us. And I mean, having independence, man, it's like a like I said before, man, it's like a it's like a badge of honor. Yeah. You know. Yeah. Most definitely, man. You know. There's also um, it's it's an app that I found out about in a in a foreign like in the United United Kingdom, in the UK, it's called the the Hive system, and what they do is they'll connect this this electronic control to your pre-existing like um um air conditioning heating unit, also the lights in your home or whatever, and they put this app on your on your phone controls your heat, your air, and your lights, just in case you're a person who is in a wheelchair mm -hmm. and your thermostat is up high where you can't reach it. Okay. And just like your light switches, if they're up high where you can't reach it, excuse me, instead of using a um, grabber to try to hit your thermostat or reach your lights, mm -hmm. you can just control everything from your phone. That's dope. Which I, which I think that is awesome. Now, of course, in the United States, there's actually multiple systems like that. It's, it's not just one kind. But you can actually have that installed in your home, you know, or your condo if you own it. You know what I'm saying? But I also would assume if you if you're renting a house or you're renting an apartment or a condo and you are somebody with a disability, I'm pretty sure you could talk to your your landlord about, hey, I need you to install this in my, my place. Mm -hmm. You know? It's um, pretty dope because, I mean, I kind of have it already. I mean, I can control my lights with my phone. That is awesome. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, man, that is that is awesome. I mean, it makes it a lot easier, especially if you don't feel like getting up. I know that's right. Just use your phone, turn the lights off. Cause y'all got to think about it. Like, even even for me, it take a little bit for me to get up out the bed and and go turn off lights and stuff like that. But it don't take that much effort. Mm -hmm. But for Travis, I mean, you got to think about it. it's a whole step by step process. He's got to <laughs> slide himself out the bed back into the chair. He got to take the arm that attaches to the chair if he took that arm off, right? Mm -hmm. You got to put that arm back on the chair, then unlock the wheels, then roll to the light switch, hit the light switch to turn it off, roll back to your bed, take the arm off, slide yourself out the chair after you lock your brakes, slide yourself out the chair, back to your bed. Mm -hmm. That's It's a step-by-step -step process to go turn off a light switch. Well, thank God I'm able to do it without with ease, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Think about if he's, you know, it's the winter time and he put the heat on, he laying in the bed watching TV and it get too hot. For an able-bodied person, you know, they'll just hop up and go hit the button, turn the heat off. But again, same process. He got to slide himself into the chair, mm -hmm. you know, unlock the brakes, put the arm back on or whatever. Just grab your phone and hit the <laughs> heat off. <laughs> right. And I'm so, good. You know what I'm saying? Makes it so much easier. Man. You know, and... and this this video is not sponsored, but I know that there are many systems because when I was selling electronics and working in different places like Sam's and Lowe's and Costco, they had these um these systems called Nest. It was called NEST, Nest, and you could bring it home, and it was like a little box. You could plug it into your your router or your your um wireless your Wi-Fi system, mm -hmm. and then it would link up your existing air conditioning heating system it would link up the, the lights electrical lights in your house because yeah. they gave you little things to plug into like the the ceiling fan socket to control the lights yeah. and stuff like that so that you can operate your whole system from your phone man i heard of that before mm -hmm. yeah you can pretty much control like everything inside your house apartment whatever with that nest yeah 
thought that was a dope idea. It is. I wish I'd have been the one to invent it. <laughs> but that's why, you know, we work on multiple streams of income. Because yeah. one day we're going to do a video on, like, side hustles for people that's disabled. Mm -hmm. That's going to be a real nice video. Oh, yeah. But um, that's why we work on, you know, multiple streams of income so that you stack your money up and then invest in companies like Ness. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. You invest in companies that are actually making things that help people with disabilities be more um, um, capable of living on their own because of these technology companies. You know, um, just like when Travis mentioned about the light switch earlier. Yeah. You know, in my house, we have ceiling fans in each room that have light bulbs in them. Now, for me, I can stand up, but I can't change a light bulb because <laughs> my ceilings are too high. You see what I'm saying? So I would need something or somebody to actually be able to reach up there if they're tall enough and actually do it. Mm -hmm. If I was single living by myself and the light bulb blew out in the fan, I'm just like, well, <laughs> I got to get a ladder with some rails so I could go up there and change it. Mm -hmm. Or there's a device I found out about, you know, maybe a year or so ago, and we did mention it in the previous video. There's a light bulb changer. It's like a pole with a suction cup on it. And you actually can stick that suction cup on the light bulb and turn it. And it'll unscrew the light bulb from the socket. <laughs> and then you switch out the, that old light bulb with a new one. And you okay. just reverse the process to switch out the light bulb. No ladder include, um, no ladder needed. And you could do it sitting in a chair if you had to sit in a chair. I mean, so me, I'm going to invest in one of them. I'm, I'm going to buy one. That sounds dope. Yeah. You know, because the whole point is getting things set to where... If I got to be by myself, I can be by myself. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Whether it's cooking, cleaning, you know what I'm saying? Doing my own laundry, whatever. Yeah. You know, you got to be able to do that on your own. That's why we talked about the front loader washers with the knobs mm -hmm. in the front, from front loading dryers, you yeah. know, for you. Because you're already sitting low. Yeah. So it wouldn't make sense to have something where you got to throw stuff in the top of it and then the knobs are at the back of the machine. Yeah, that wouldn't make you sense. Know? A safety issue in the kitchen, the knobs are on the, above your burners on the back of the stove. Mm -hmm. That's that's not safe. Nah. You know? So part of your independence is also part of your safety. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. That's a big issue. Um, let's see, we talked about, you know, wide wide spaces with the doorways. And also small things like mm -hmm. uh <clears throat> like if you want to adjust the speed on the ceiling fan, like having extenders on the the little on the little so, switch on the ceiling fan. Yeah, to be able to can. adjust the speed or if you want to turn the light off. You don't want to turn the switch off. You just want to pull the string to turn the light off. Put something on it where it hangs down low. Yeah, it's like a longer string. Just extenders, you know. Right. Some of the small things. Man. And I've seen, um, speaking of small things that make a big difference. If you are a person like myself that uses crutches, but like in my case, I can I can put my crutches down and actually move around to a certain extent without them. Now, if I go outside of my house, like I'm in my yard or something like that, mm -hmm. I, I could put them down. But because the yards are like they have holes and they have dips and they have, you know, little, little hills and little, you know, all that stuff is a trip hazard for me. Yeah. You know, it, it make it make walking very difficult. Mm -hmm. But if you're using crutches, let's say you use one crutch. But you can't put that crutch down because you need it for balance. Maybe you need to get like a big rubber band that you can tie around the crutch and put the other end on your hand. So that way you can lean on the crutch and use both your hands. And then when you finish what you're doing, you don't have to worry about the crutch falling away from you and now you're stuck. Mm -hmm. Because the band is going to keep the, cl the crutch close to you. You know what I'm saying? It's, it's little things like that that could make your independence go a long way. Yeah. You know? Um, I know one thing that's difficult for me, um, would be after I wash and dry the covers and stuff on the bed, putting the fitted sheet on the mattress. That is very difficult for me yeah. be because I have to pull the, pull the bed away from the mattress. I mean, away from the wall. Right. Mm -hmm. But then once I pull the bed away from the wall, it's like the foot of the bed is closer to me. So I can put the fitted sheet on that part. When I go around the bed and I'm trying to pull the fitted sheet, but at the same time trying to balance myself, it's hard. <laughs> See what I'm saying? Yeah. Do you have any tips or anything that you use like when you, you know, 
wash your covers or something like that. How do you how do you put the sheet back on your mattress? If if you don't mind me asking that. Uh, I don't really have any difficulties like putting the sheets back on the mattress because I mean, I pretty much just pull the mattress away from the wall, mm -hmm. like from whatever side I'm on. You know, I pull it like closer to me. Mm -hmm. I, I put the sheet on the mattress, then push it back, then I go back to the other side and do the same thing, pull it from by the wall, and put the sheet on the mattress. So I don't really like have any like trouble like putting it on the mattress like talking about. I wish, man. I when I say I struggle. Yeah. Maybe the mattress is just too heavy, you know what I'm saying? Because, like, you know, my daughter, you know, my baby girl, her bed is a queen, queen-size bed. Mm -hmm. I can move her whole bed, no problem. It's very light. Yeah. My bed, on the other hand, <laughs> in the bedroom, it's, it's like an extended king-size okay. bed. And the mattress is very solid. It's, the material that it's made out of, it is extremely heavy. I'm talking about, like, because yeah. one day... I just wanted to see. <laughs> I was at the house by, my, by myself, and I grabbed the like the the mattress by the foot of the bed mm -hmm. and lifted up just part of the mattress and tried to hold it, and my whole body started shaking. It was that it was that heavy, Dang. and I sat it down, and I heard it <laughs> when I sat it down. Like it's it's. Uh, <laughs> out of that mattress. I don't know what they put it. Like I don't know what material <laughs> it is, but it, it's very heavy. Man. Got rocks in there, but I don't. They must have body parts, some cadavers <laughs> in there, some. That joint is heavy, you know what I'm saying? Money, I'm, money my, in there. Man. My my wife, she can she like she can lift it up, you know, like when we make up the bed and stuff. That's why a lot of times when I wash the covers and stuff like that, I'll dry them and I just sit them on the bed because I know being able to lift that mattress up to put the fitted sheet on ain't finna happen for me. Yeah, you know, and she'll just you know she'll get home. And I'm like, hey, I wash the covers there on the bed. And she'll be like, okay. And she'll go in there and she'll do the fitted sheet and make up the bed. Because, like, once the fitted sheet is on, I can spread the flat sheet in the blankets and all of that. That don't don't bother me. But that fitted sheet, though, oh, we fight. <laughs> yeah, we fights. You know what I'm saying? Even trying to put the fitted sheet on, like, my daughter's bed. Her bed is, is light. The mattress is light. But I still struggle with that fitted sheet, trying to balance myself and put it. You know, on the mattress. It's just... Because I've tried it even, like, just keep a crutch with me and balance with the crutch. But now I'm trying to fix the sheet on the bed with one hand. Messing everything up. Yeah. <laughs> so I just... I leave it. Like, I'm not, you know... You ain't messing with it, huh? I ain't messing with it. You know, I, I don't know. Maybe they got some stuff I can spray on the fitted sheet and just let it dry instead of pulling it off the bed. I don't know. Yeah. But, but I got to figure that out. If I was by myself, I'd have to do it, right? Yeah. So, I got to figure that out. You know? Um, let's see. Do I have any more questions for you? Hmm. Okay. I got one. Is there any type of adaptive technology that you feel you don't have right now, but you would like to have to make something better for you? Hmm. That's a good question. Hmm. I stumped them, y'all. Y'all see that? <laughs> <laughs> nah, I mean, I wouldn't mind having that nest you was talking about where it control everything. Like a thermostat and everything. Yeah, I thought about getting that myself. I wouldn't mind having that. That way, you know, it's like voice activated. It can be. Yeah. They say, they say, um, Google, I think Google backs the nest. Like they're, they're in contract with the company. Mm -hmm. But then Alexa also has um, um, something like that. You can you can get the little the little microchip pieces they make or something like that and put it in different sockets in your house, and then it syncs up with your Amazon Alexa system, and you can you can walk in the house and say Alexa, turn the lights on. Okay. See what I'm saying? Yeah. Instead of having to have your your phone and stuff out to to do everything. Because if your phone dies, then you kind of, now you're back to the manual way of doing things. So, I I know that um, Amazon Alexa has a system like that that's voice activated, but I, I think that the Nest system also can be voice activated. Okay. Yeah, I wouldn't mind having that, man. <laughs> <laughs> it, it sounds nice, man, for real. Yeah, it does. Especially, yeah, on, especially on like them cold mornings you wake up and the heat not on, then yeah. you get out the bed and... 
Go turn it. Yep. <laughs> Just be like, hey. Turn the heat on. Turn the heat on. <laughs> 74, 75. <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> Please, <laughs> you know what I'm saying. And me, I, I like being cold. I don't, I don't like heat. I don't like being hot. Cause when I get too hot, I, I get headaches and all that. I don't like being hot. I mean, I like the, I like being cold to a certain extent. You know, and I keep it freezing in my house. <laughs> it be freezing. You, know? you like a meat locker. It, hey, you should have seen when we first moved in here. The thermostat was kind of broke, but we didn't know because the air worked. But we always wondered why the thermostat would drop on its own. I'm talking about literally, like, I fell asleep on the couch one night after getting out the tub and stuff. Like, I put my night clothes on, went in the front to watch TV because my wife was asleep. I didn't want to wake her up. Mm -hmm. And when I looked at the thermostat, it was on 70, right? I woke up. It had to be about 2 in the morning, right? I fell asleep watching TV. When I woke up, I wondered why it was so cold in the house. I walked down the hallway, looked on the thermostat. It was at 64. Okay. It just dropped on its own. So we got the thermostat replaced, and we stopped having that problem. <laughs> but that joint, that night when I woke up and it was at 64. That thermostat saying, we about to, we about to freeze, y'all. <laughs> For real. I thought, I thought, <laughs> somebody had put the. <laughs> thought you were sleeping on some ice? <laughs> yeah, I was cold. <laughs> I was cold, man. It was, <laughs> it was cold, man. Sure. Didn't feel nothing. <laughs> <laughs> like Nova came. <laughs> it was bad. <laughs> so, it was real bad. That's crazy. But yeah. That's it. You good? Yeah. That's it. Alright. Well, yeah, we just want to give y'all, you know, some of our life hacks. For sure. You know what I'm saying? And y'all let us know down in the comments, like any. Are those things that we mentioned, are they, you know, are they interesting to you? Um, if you are a person that is disabled or if you're able-bodied and you use some of these things, let us know. You know what I'm saying? And uh, don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and share this video. And don't forget to catch us on Instagram at Real Talk with Chris and Travis. Also, do not forget that we are on TikTok. Um, same name as the YouTube channel. Mm -hmm. We also have an email address. Same name as the YouTube channel. Um, with yahoo.com and that's it man. and we'll be back with, with another video stay tuned we out <laughs>